wouldn't you think that understanding something called ease would be easy? I know the definitions, but that doesn't help me. First of all, there are two types of ease in the pattern making context. Fit ease is the amount of extra fabric added to a pattern of your base measurements in order to get it on your body. Then there's style ease, where the designer adds more extra fabric to create the look and style he or she wants. All of the commercial patterns that you buy already have the intended ease added for both fit and style for the pattern size. But that still doesn't mean it's going to fit you. How can you find the size that fits you when clearly even the measurements listed in the size chart aren't the actual measurements? Measure your favorite clothes, of course. Measuring your clothes takes away much of the guesswork you have when you're staring at a brand new pattern and wondering just how far you can trust it. I'll show you how to measure a t-shirt, jacket, and pants, and then how to use the measurements to make the pattern fit. We're going to start with a t-shirt. This is the simplest garment to measure. And the first thing that you want to do is put a pin at the center back neckline, the center front neckline, and the center front hem. Then start measuring key points between the shoulders, then under the arms, right to where the sleeve meets the side seam, from side seam to side seam. And then from side seam to side seam across the bottom. Those are your key horizontal measurements. Then measure from the neckline shoulder point to the hem, the armhole shoulder point to the hem, and then across the bicep, which is this little point right here in the sleeve to the fold line, that's seven inches. And from the seam to the hem on your sleeve. Before we move on, I'd like to also get some neck measurements. Place a ruler across these shoulder points here at the neckline so that you have a nice straight parallel line and measure from the ruler to the top of the center front neckline. You can also measure the back neckline and measure between these two neckline points. Now you have everything you need to reproduce the way this t-shirt fits. Measuring a jacket is very similar to measuring the t-shirt. You have the same key points, the shoulder points, the neckline, the hem, and the width. On a jacket, you can identify the center front by looking at the center of your buttons. They should run along the center front. On the back, you can just fold the side seams together and mark your center back using that as a reference. Then, just as you did on the t-shirt, measure from shoulder to shoulder. Measure from armhole to armhole. Measure under the arms, as you did before. You can measure at the waist and at the hem. Your other horizontal measurement is the biceps. And this is always a tricky measurement because you have this funny triangular shape here under the arm. But measure from the underarm point to the fold in the sleeve. Remember, that's the distance around the fullest part of your arm and it'll be two times this amount. Then measure your vertical measurements. From this shoulder point to the hem, from the neckline shoulder point to the hem, from the center front neckline to the hem, and last, your sleeve length. Remember, this is to duplicate fit, not to duplicate style. So you're not getting things like the depth of your collar or the details. If you want to copy this pattern, you would measure all of those too. Now measuring your pants is going to be completely different from the other two tops, but there are still a few similarities. I've moved this leg completely apart so that we can really study one leg 
and I've folded it along the side seam and pressed everything smoothly so that there aren't any bubbles underneath. You'll notice that this is not on the inseam. The fold is beyond the inseam. Then let's take a measurement of the waistline. In this case, it's curved. So I curve my tape measure as I take the measurement. I also measure across the hip, just as a little bit of a guideline. Then measure from the waist, following the center seam around to the back. That is the crotch length. It's actually half of the crotch length. Then we want the crotch depth, which is from this point to the waistline. It's a different measurement. Then this is just like your underarm measurement. Catch that little triangular area there and measure to the side seam. And then measure down the inseam to the hem for the leg length. This and the circumference of the hem should help you fit pants the way you like them. Sketch simple outlines of the garments and label the measurements you took. Remember, everything you've measured is doubled. This is actually convenient for working with patterns. I learned my most favorite clothes are all almost the same measurement. Strangely, few of them are the same size. Having this information enables you to chart your own comfort level. You can use it to compare new patterns. You can pre-fit ready-made clothes in the store and you'll know exactly what direction to take when you're diving into a new pattern for the first time. It works because you're coming from an informed place. For example, this t-shirt has seen better days, but I have always vowed to copy a pattern from it before putting it in the rag bag. I measured it and then decided to use the measurements to make a modified version of this pattern. I started by comparing the garment measurements to the pattern. I had to adjust the length of both the arms and the body, plus alter the shoulder slope. Then I found that the waist and hip had too much shaping. The armhole needed shaping, and the neckline needed to be narrower but was the perfect depth. I also added to the sleeve on the back side seam allowance. The time it took to make these changes was minimal, and now I have a perfect t-shirt pattern that I know I'll use often. With one and two-thirds yards of fabric and about two hours, I can whip out a new t-shirt. This trick jumpstarts every new pattern I use. 